to anyone that doesn't know me, uh, my name's Christine Boone, and I'm currently working in business development at Keysight. So as some of you might recognize me, I actually spoke at um, the Women in Quantum Summit in 2020. And at that summit, I talked about my experience working both at a startup as well as a grad student. And now kind of the, uh, I got invited back to sort of continue my, my talk on my life journey because it's, it's changed a little bit in the last year. So um, yeah, and as a general outline for this talk, I'm just gonna kind of start with sort of the, the big transition periods in the last 10 years for me. So the first one was um, switching from undergrad to grad school. The second was from grad school to working in a startup. And then the third and most recent was startup to a global company. So yeah, in, in my undergrad, I did that at the University of Calgary. So that's in Western Canada. Um, after about the fourth year of astrophysics, I realized I kind of wanted to do a different type of research. And I started getting really excited about quantum computing because one of all its applications, but in general, I always liked doing research that um, just made absolutely no sense. So like astrophysics is really cool because just the sheer size and scale of things was is very overwhelming. But then with the quantum, um, it's just so counterintuitive that it really sort of drew me in. And so also while I kind of go through this, I wanted to discuss the, the three main mentors I've had throughout this sort of 10 year journey. Um, and then just starting with Christoph Simon. So he was my undergrad research um, professor uh, at the University of Calgary. So in my undergrad, I was actually able to do a bit of research. And um, yeah, he was my he was my mentor for that. So. The, the really the biggest piece of advice that I got from him about getting into grad school, and I thought I'd share with you because after the last Women in Quantum Summit, I had a lot of people reach out uh, via LinkedIn and were asking me a lot of questions about grad school and how to get into grad school. So I thought I'd just quickly kind of go over like what what Christoph taught me. So one of the big things, which is a little unfortunate, but um, grades do matter, and I personally don't know if grades indicate like researchability, but um, yeah, so so try to get good grades. Um, the the other big one is networking. So in like less of a formal way, I always think of networking as like very formal, but in undergrad, like even just reach out to your professors after class and try to get to know them and try to make those connections because they can also really, they can give you really good advice on what it's like to be in academia and their experiences. And so it can help you make choices on like what you want your career path to be. And so um, that's kind of actually how I met Christoph Simon was that um, one of my profs, I had talked to him after class and it said, I want to try to get some research under my belt in undergrad. And he uh, connected me with Christoph. And yeah, so I was able to do uh, two research projects with Christoph. Um, the first was trying to create global entanglement using satellites and quantum repeaters. And then the second was like very different. Um, we were looking at how biophotons in your brain, like the, the transmission of those in your brain. Um, yeah, and the other really good piece of advice he gave me was to just apply to a bunch of different universities and just kind of see where I got in. So um, yeah, he had this like Excel sheet where he had a bunch of different professors that he'd worked with over the years or had kind of known. And in this Excel sheet, he had like the kind of research they were doing and as it turned out, there was 26 universities on this list. So when I decided to apply for grad school, I decided to apply to all 26 of them, which I think that there's a happy medium between <laughs> applying to one and applying to 26, because um, 26 was just way too many and took months of work. But yeah, I, I would recommend applying to more than one university just because I think you'd be surprised where you can get in. Um, the other one is so at all these 26 universities, there was a supervisor that I was interested in working with based off of their research and, and whatever else was going on. And so what I did for each of them was I, I looked up what kind of research they, they were doing. And at the time, like in undergrad, it's pretty hard to read a, a research paper. So I just even recommend like trying to understand the abstract and Google as many of those words as you need to, to sort of piece together what they're talking about. But yeah, in that email just sort of mentioned like I'm interested in this this research that you're doing. 
for A, B, and C reasons. And, and I think that that also helped me um, get interviews and, and be able to talk to some of these supervisors. And then the other thing, too, is it's really important to find a supervisor that kind of matches your work style. Like, I think that it's the most important part of the whole process is finding the right supervisor because they pretty much dictate how successful you'll be in grad school. So, um, yeah, so emailing their current students was a big one. And, and a lot of the students actually would reply and were very honest. And so then that way you're actually going to be working with a supervisor that has the sort of same work style as, as you want, like if they're hands on or if they're hands off or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, so I started my PhD at the University of Waterloo. That's the picture on the left. And then the picture on the right is the Institute for Quantum Computing. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a really fantastic institute. It's rated like top 10 um, quantum research institutes as well as top 10 like best places to go to grad school for quantum. Um, I do strongly recommend it. It's got a really great community and yeah, yeah, it was, it was a really positive experience. Um, and then the research that I did while I was there, so this like weird graphic in the middle I just made, <laughs> but pretty much what I was trying to do was characterize like noise in quantum systems. So this is supposed to be me as an investigator trying to find white noise. Um, but yeah, so, so the idea behind that is that quantum error is really hard to detect and really hard to characterize. And so you have to make different protocols to be able to kind of get bits and pieces of the error because you also want to run a protocol that's scalable. You don't want to have to characterize the error in your device over days. You kind of, because there's so much drift in the devices, you want to be able to characterize the error in like maximum an hour or something like that. So um, those kinds of protocols are what I worked on my PhD. And then my last project was um, comparing different devices. So making a standard for being able to compare like a superconducting qubit device to an ion trap device. And so some rewards and challenges that I found for my PhD and, and for research in general, um, I'm, I'm an extrovert, so a lot of these are related to being extrovert. Um, but yeah, for me, I, I love just being able to work on interesting projects and you could kind of just read a bunch of papers and, and understand the fields and kind of work at your own pace. And also our research group was really great and supportive and fun. So I, I really loved being able to spend the time with them. Um, conferences are really cool for grad school. You just meet people from everywhere doing completely different things. And, and honestly, I, I feel like I learned the most from going to conferences because instead of having to read their like really dense papers, you could just ask questions and try to get them to um, describe it to you in the simplest possible way. And yeah, as a, as a theorist myself, like a lot of those conferences are great because yeah, I, I've never really spent a lot of time in the lab. So it's uh, it was interesting to actually kind of understand what their day-to-day -day looks like and what they're actually doing um, and then not having to go deep dive into their papers and try to understand what any of the words meant. So, um, and then, yeah, the, the freedom of the PhD is really nice too. So um, at least in my experience, like the, the, you have like realistic deadlines and, and things like that, but you have freedom to kind of explore the field and, and understand different parts of it, which I, which I really enjoyed. But um, some challenges for me, because I was a theorist, so you work alone a lot. And so I think that um, ex <laughs> experimentalists are just generally more extroverted than theorists because, yeah, you just spend six years kind of working alone. So that was a challenge for me for sure. Um, writing grant proposals, it's, it's kind of a strange thing to like have your income dictated by if someone thinks that you did this interesting thing or were able to um, write about it in a way that was interesting to them. Um, and then, yeah, burnout is like very common in academia and especially like in grad school. Um, so, yeah, I think that's also uh, it's really important to talk about because for the first year I was kind of going through cycles of burnout and um, I thought I was the only one, and then I realized that pretty much everyone was kind of <laughs> dealing with it themselves. Um, and then, yeah, the other challenges were, like, in undergrad, you never really hear about the fact that there's so few academic jobs um, and tenure-track positions, and then you kind of just start hearing about it when you're in grad school, so that was a little daunting. Um, and then, yeah, finding the finish line. I think that once you get into research, you always have so many things going on, and, and you have so many different projects you're working on, and so it, it's sometimes hard to define, like, I'm going to stop at the end of this project. 
um, because you're just really interested in all the things that you're working on. So yeah, finding the finish line is is difficult. Um, Yeah, so moving on to Joseph Emerson. So he was my supervisor in my PhD. And then in my second year of grad school, um, he started a company called Quantum Benchmark. And so the the point of this, the, the startup was we made software for the protocol we were producing so that it was easier for experimentalists and lab groups to actually implement these these protocols. And so my role at Quantum Benchmark, um, mostly it was doing the, the research part, this weird graphic in the center. And then I was helping out a little bit with the software development, but like, I'm not very good at software development. So <laughs> most of it was just like, trying to put into the code like what my protocols were doing. And then also I got to just wear a lot of different hats. Um, from day one, I, I was really clear with Joseph that I wanted to just be as much a part of the startup as possible. And I wanted to learn these different skills. And so for a while I was the head of hiring and helping with HR and just a bunch of different stuff. So it was it was really, it was awesome. Every day was is very different. Um, and just to kind of give a punchline overview of what our software did, so this this side so it can kind of be split into two parts. Um, this one is for runtime improvement and output validation. So this is for people that are trying to use a quantum computer for some kind of quantum application. And the idea here is we can get a really good idea of the error model and all the, the, the issues with the device. And then we can run the algorithm or whatever they're interested in and help them run that on the device like as um, cleanly as possible with the, the reducing the error as much as possible. And then the part that I worked on my PhD for the six years on was um, developing these characterization protocols to characterize all these different parts of the error profile to help with um, calibration and, and help, to help research groups understand like what's really going on in their device and, and how to fix it. Um, yeah, so as you can probably tell by my rewards and challenges, I, I definitely like the startup part more than the, the grad school part. Um, yeah, so the rewards, I, I really liked getting to interact with industry. It was, it was cool to see, like, these people just came from all walks of life and, and ended up in quantum computing somehow. And, yeah, and I liked being able to wear different hats and have every day be different. And, yeah, and I got to just learn a bunch of different skills because I was doing hiring, like, I hadn't had an actual job interview in so long. And then all of a sudden I was like interviewing people. It was, it was, yeah, it was a very strange um, thing, but yeah. And then I, I like how scrappy startups are. Like there's, there's like this, this um, high chance of success or um, there's like a, yeah, there's like, you can, you can be part of a group that, that builds this, this company from the ground up. And I, and I always found that that was really exciting and it also gets everybody really motivated. Like I think everybody in our at the startup was like very motivated and hardworking and yeah. And yeah, there's this potential for growth. So and then the challenges was that because so I think this is my, my personal challenge, but I was pulled in a lot of different directions because I was doing all these different things. But um, yeah, so it was, it some, was sometimes a little hard to focus on one thing at a time when I had sort of five or six job titles. But um yeah, it was a it was a really great experience. And then yeah, so recently, um, as of June first, I started working at Keysight because they acquired Quantum Benchmark. And uh, Liz, who we just heard from, um, yeah, so she's been my mentor through the whole process of going from a startup to a corporation, and and yeah, it's honestly been a really wild ride. Like I I never really thought I'd work for a really big company, and. Um, yeah, it's been honestly really great. And I think also Liz has a background in everything. She's worked like every job that um, HP and, and Keysight has had. So um, it's, al- it's also really, it's great to learn from someone that has such a strong background in all these different things. So yeah, um, I had a very different sort of view of what it was going to be like to work for Keysight. Um, Yeah, yeah, I really just never thought I'd I'd work for a big company because I I also thought because there's large teams, it would make it less personal. And and I found the exact opposite. Um, The quantum part of Keysight is a very tight knit group of people. And already in the last month and a half, I've had like individual meetings with every single person on the team and everyone is really great and has high energy. Um, Yeah, and the other expectation, I didn't know how to put this into words other than just calling it beige, but I sort of had this like, 
sort of robotic response to working at a big company and it would just kind of be like a little sad and gloomy and yeah it's the exact opposite like i find i find that like the energy is just as high as what was at the startup and everybody's really motivated and like everyone has the same um goal which is just how do we bring quantum computers to market to have all of these like really um groundbreaking changes to our society so and and the other thing too is i just kind of thought there wouldn't be much freedom because you're just kind of a single cog in this this giant machine but uh it's the opposite again like it's very accommodating everybody's like very kind and everyone's just trying to work together to to accomplish the same things um i also sort of thought I have endless meetings just is <laughs> always what i heard from my parents who worked in big companies when i was growing up was that they had all these useless endless meetings and uh yeah not at all i find that like one thing that's really emphasized is that you don't invite anybody that doesn't absolutely need to be there to meetings which is is lovely cuz then i'm only in meetings where i know that i'm actually going to be contributing in some way um and i thought that because there'd be so much structure to a large company it'd be like re- really like oppressive um but i find that with the structure really enabling like there's always like a clear goal with every single thing that you're doing and so yeah i find that i'm getting like way more done than i ever have because there's just clear goals and objectives with every single thing that I'm doing every day. Um and then yeah, and everybody's on the same page on on what the purpose of certain things are, which is nice. And uh yeah, and I because I've never done business development before, I was I was pretty worried that I was just going to kind of get thrown into the deep end and that they'd have these very high expectations for me because I do have this background in quantum computing, but like I barely knew what business development meant went before I started. So <laughs> I was pretty nervous that uh Yeah, I I sort of was worried that I would like be bad at it from day 1, but the whole point is that I I'm learning what I'm supposed to be doing and and everyone's been really supportive and and helping with onboarding and giving me like yeah, like a clear understanding of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing, which has been really awesome. Um and yeah, the other thing I wanted to touch on was so in undergrad, all you hear about is you like especially I did a physics undergrad. You always hear about oh, like when you go to grad school, and then when you're in grad school they're like oh when you are on a 10 year track when you're trying to get a 10 year track position and we don't really talk about industry enough and there's this sort of idea that industry is like this dark side and that you're selling yourself out by switching to industry but it's something like 10 like 10% of people with PhDs actually end up with like 10 year track positions right so the other 80 or 90% of us are going to end up in industry or doing something like this and so yeah i just want to touch on the fact that like i wish i knew this like a few years ago because yeah it industry's really not the dark side everybody's really supportive it has a very similar like vibe as as grad school and academia everyone has the same goal and we're all just trying to solve really interesting problems and i don't have to apply to grants which is my favorite i really don't like applying grants um And yeah, just generally like access to the bigger picture. Like I find that when when you're doing research, you just kind of go down this very narrow funnel and you're trying to solve this very small pro- like very narrow problem. Whereas I find that once you become part of industry, it's like you get access to this bigger picture and you and you can also sort of put in perspective like what your role has been and and how you're kind of helping that bigger picture sort of c- come to fruition. Um there's also a lot of opportunities for growth and obviously job security but um yeah um and then yeah just to finish off this is my last slide um okay. so my purpose for going into business development was it it took me 6 years to understand the research and I'm I'm fairly good at d- describing what it is that my research does and I'm good at funneling all of the 6 years of information into something that's like useful for a customer to hear about right quantum computing is going to affect every industry and so we need people that like talking and are extroverted and understand the research to kind of share that with industry and especially things like banks and um uh encrypting private data like we we need to make sure that those those industries are quantum ready for when we actually do build this quantum computer but yeah thank you for listening if anyone has any questions about business development or my experience in the last month and a half um uh add me on linkedin or go to our keysight website or talk to me in the career room um in an hour from now thank you